Hello lovely ones. I decided I would do another video in my introductory series because um, I've kind of neglected it a little bit so far. So yeah, today I'm going to talk about pantheism. And I'm often surprised by how many people actually don't have any idea what pantheism really means. So first and foremost, pantheism means, I mean pan means uh, all, everything, and theism is the belief in a god. So um, Theos, I think, is, is God, and then theism is the belief, or, you know, a system of belief in some form of, of divinity. So pantheism literally means that everything is God. That's opposed, as opposed to polytheism, which is um, poly, which is sort of many, I think, something like that, uh, many or a multiple, so many gods. Um, and I think that's that's two ter two phrases that trip people up that they kind of will get confused between the two because pantheism maybe sounds like um, all the gods or something, um, but it, it literally means that everything is God. So if you're new to this concept, just take take a second to think about what that actually might entail. Everything is God, and that really means everything. That means everything in existence, everything in the universe as we know it, and everything that exists outside of the universe, everything on the planet, everything man-made and not man-made, everything is God. So within pantheism then, we have a couple of different um, focus areas that people have, because pantheism is definitely not a religion. It's sort of like a theology or maybe a philosophy of life. Uh, and you will find that different pantheists will have very, very wildly different beliefs. And that is the same when it comes to any sort of theism. Say polytheism, the belief in many gods, um, you will have a really wide range of different types of beliefs within that um, label, people who ascribe to that label. Um, you will have you know, soft polytheists, hard polytheists, and, and so on. Um, monotheists, obviously, there is a huge range of, of different belief systems and religions there. And pantheism is definitely no different. As far as I can make out, um, obviously the idea that everything is God, or everything equals God, um, that will be common to all pantheists. And as far as I can make out, the only other kind of common philosophy that every all pantheists seem to have is that of monism. So monism is essentially, it is the opposite of dualism, and it is the belief that everything is the same or of the same substance. So therefore, that would suggest that there isn't um, a divide between spirit and matter, but that everything is one. Um, now, I have come across some pantheists who have a more dualistic um, belief system. That definitely happens. But I would say that, very generally speaking, most pantheists will have some form of, of monistic um, understanding of how the world works. On some level, they believe that everything is one, because um, if you're going to have something, say, God, um, one concept that is drawing everything together like that, if everything is God, God is everything, and um, then it kind of follows that everything must be connected. Um, and obviously I am a monist, and that way of thinking just makes perfect sense to me. Um, particularly when you consider that if we, you know, all came from, if the whole universe expanded from, from one um, infinitesimally, oh my god, I can't say that word out loud apparently, <laughs> infinitely tiny um, point um, at the Big Bang, then obviously we all came from that one tiny point, and we were all at one point, or everything that has um, arisen since then, uh, was all at one point encompassed in, in, in an infinitely small um, space or time. Um, so it, it's just a, a philosophy that makes sense to me. Um, but then when it comes to different types of monism and different types of pantheism, you can go quite a lot of different uh, directions with that idea. So you can have the, I feel as, you know, there are some pantheists who believe that um, everything is one, but everything is matter. Uh, and that is a, a, quite a mechanistic and naturalistic kind of interpretation of pantheism. And then on the other hand, you will have pantheists who believe that everything is spirit, everything is consciousness, and those kind of things. So that's a very different kind of understanding of pantheism, as you can imagine. It's, a, it's much less mechanistic, and it's, uh, it kind of is a lot more mystical or esoteric, uh, and that kind of thing. Another way that pantheists diverge pretty hugely is um, those pantheists who feel that pantheism is the opposite to athe atheism, and those pantheists who consider themselves to be atheists. So that's obviously a huge difference as well, because for pantheists who believe that they are atheists, um, pantheism is basically just saying the universe equals God, um, therefore 
what everyone calls God, the thing that people call God, is just the universe. It's this sort of just the universe kind of take on things. Um, they, you know, they, they might have a, a particularly um, monistic understanding of the universe. Uh, they see everything as being connected and things like that. Um, they see nature as being important. They feel that it's important to acknowledge the material, to acknowledge um, our physical existence on this plane and things like that. They might be environmentalists. Um, they might even be uh, spiritual naturalists. Um, so they feel that there is a need to maybe have spiritual practices or religious practices to sort of acknowledge um, our experience of this um, amazing thing called the universe. But when it comes down to it, they are atheists because all they're saying is just um, what you call God or what people who believe in God call, God call God is just the universe. There is no, they're, they're kind of saying there is no God. Then of course, on the other hand, you have the people who say that it's the complete opposite to atheism. So for these people, it's um, it kind of boils in the, in the other direction. It's this more sort of expansive idea of the universe is, everything in the universe is divine and is worthy of reverence. And um, there's usually sort of a connotation there that everything is consciousness, everything is spirit, rather than the more materialistic side of things. Um, these, these pantheists will often see the universe almost as being one huge being. Not necessarily, um, or definitely not a personal god or a conscious being, um, but that it is just one uh, huge organic being that is creating itself. Um, and often people like that will have maybe belief systems or ideas that um, maybe run alongside modern scientific um, understandings of how the universe works, but they're not just completely integrated with modern science and they might be slightly alternative um, views or philosophies, if you see what I mean. Um, that they kind of, yeah, that they're kind of going, going off in a direction of saying there is more, that, more to the universe than meets the eye. It's not just mechanistic, it maybe has innate purposes or innate um, tendencies that are becoming latent, that, that are latent and that are becoming imminent as the universe unfurls and that kind of thing. So you can see how there are um, some really quite uh, different perspectives on pantheism and how if you sit five pantheists down into one room you are definitely not going to have a situation where everyone has the same beliefs whatsoever. Um, as you might have gathered from my previous videos, I fall on the side of, well, I'm definitely a monist, so I believe that everything is one, everything is connected, um, and that uh, the universe, all that connectedness itself, in a way, for me, is what is divine about the universe. It's, it's, it's the actual connect, connection, the, the actual connectedness, and um, the, the, very, the very act of its being and the very act of its creation um, is divine for me. I would fall on the side of believing that everything is consciousness or potentially spirit, though I haven't really ever come to a conclusion of what spirit actually means for me. So I would say maybe consciousness uh, rather than saying that everything is, is just cold matter. Um, and I very definitely believe that, well, my pantheism, is, it definitely incorporates um, the divine, a deity of some description. It's not a personal deity in that it's not um, it's not like a, an anthropomorphic or, or a human-like figure or a human-like form of consciousness. There's nothing like that because um, in a way it can't be because it's so huge. It's, it's everything, it's in everything, it's in everyone. Um, yeah, so that kind of gives you an outline of what pantheism is and what my take on pantheism is because that's all that anyone can kind of give really. The Wikipedia article on pantheism is actually quite good and it gives you some good starting points for uh, going off and reading other people like Spinoza and John Toland and um, some of the major early pantheistic thinkers in that. Um, so I'll link that below, that's a good place to start if you, if you just kind of want to get a working knowledge of what pantheism is all about. Um, and I'll actually, I will link below as well, uh, Kellyanne of the Four Queens did a series on what pantheism is to her um, quite early on when she started her channel, so I will link to, to that series um, as well. I mentioned early on that uh, pantheism is often a, a theology or a philosophy that is 
um, part of neo-pagan uh, movements, neo-pagan spiritual um, practices or neo-pagan beliefs. Um, and that is very definitely the case. A lot of the early uh, Wiccan or uh, neo-pagan writers had a very definite pantheistic perspective on things. Now obviously there are a lot of pagans who are devotional polytheists who are very definitely not pantheists uh, and there's um, a whole different range of, of different types of theists within paganism. Um, but it's definitely worth having a look at that as well. I would say that a lot of the early, early neo-pagan or early Wiccan writers um, who sort of particularly writing in uh, maybe the 70s. There was a lot of Jungian thought and a lot of pantheistic thought going on, so um, you might be interested in that as well. Um, pantheism is also, um, there are also sort of pantheistic elements to Hinduism and uh, Taoism is quite pantheistic, I think, as well. So um, those are things to look into as well if you're interested in this as a theological construct. So I hope that was uh, helpful. If you have any questions, if something I've said didn't make any sense to you or you'd like some clarification on anything, please do let me know. And I hope you enjoyed this. Take care, guys.